The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. I was thinking about this little title, Manifestation. And I like short titles. I used a title once in a sermon that said, I just stopped in to see what condition my condition was in. And then I realized it was a title of a pop song that used to be out and that pop song is not too good of a reputation because it talks about drug use actually is what it talked about the Lord gives me shorter titles now because it's not the title the title helps gives you something to kind of hang on it's not the title it's the word of God it's what God's word says that's what's important because my words will pass away and the only way that they won't pass away is because of being recorded. And hopefully they'll be up for people to hear when the rapture takes place. Somebody will be listening and say, that used to be a boy that used to preach when he used to be on earth, and now he's not on earth anymore. What a wonderful time that's going to be. The greatest miracle that will take place so far on this planet other than the resurrection of Christ, and it's really a part of the resurrection of Christ, is the fact the rapture of the church. When the rapture takes place, the dead in Christ from all over this planet will come out of those graves, come out of the ocean, come out of the trash can, come out of where they are, and will be transported immediately into the presence of God, and those of us who are alive and will remain will be caught up together with them and meet the Lord in the clouds and the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That is a miracle that is yet to take place, and it will be the greatest miracle of all. And part of that, of course, is salvation. Salvation is a miracle that brings a person from darkness to light. And the only way you can take part in that first resurrection and be a part of the rapture is to have part in God's salvation. So manifestation is a part of that. Manifestation says that something is revealed, something happens, something takes place. It's like the man who started at the end of the room and he would run and he would jump and he would walk back to the end of the room and he would run and he would jump. Somebody said, what in the world are you doing? He said, well, I got these pair of boots at the end of this room and I figured if I ran and jumped long enough, sooner or later I'd be jumping into them boots. <laughs> the manifestation is you jump into something that hasn't been before or at least it's been in such a way that maybe you're familiar with it. It has been before, but it doesn't happen all the time. But thank God when it does happen. Manifestation then is that. This text verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now what are we talking about He talks about spiritual gifts and the nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. There are many gifts, but there are nine gifts of the Holy Ghost. And you talk about the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and gifts of healing and miracles and tongues and interpretation of tongues and prophecy and all these gifts that are mentioned. But what is this one verse here that's in the middle of that that says that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all? The manifestation of the Spirit is not necessarily the presence of the Holy Spirit because the presence of the Holy Spirit is in every born-again believer's life, but He may or may not manifest Himself. The manifestation of the Spirit refers particularly to the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and it refers to each time that the Spirit chooses to manifest Himself. Sometimes we think that we have to be in church in the sanctuary amongst a bunch of people for the Spirit to manifest Himself. But you can be by yourself and the Spirit can still manifest Himself. 
the manifestation of the Spirit. So whether it takes place in one or two or one or two thousands, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. When the Holy Ghost manifests Himself, it is done so that we can profit, so that we can prosper, so that we can be added to, so that we can be benefited by, so that we can be bettered by. And it's like you said, sometimes we don't leave like we came. We leave better than we came in Jesus' name. Why is that? Because the Holy Ghost manifests Himself. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. God does not manifest Himself all the time and stay there, but He manifests Himself many times, and there are many times when He wants to manifest Himself that He is not allowed to. Some churches don't allow Him to manifest Himself. If He manifested Himself, they would not know what to do with it or with Him. It's like the old lady who came to church and she got excited about what the preacher was saying. And she said, praise the Lord. And they kind of looked at her like she was from another planet. And after the preacher got his composure and he kept on a little bit longer and she said, hallelujah. And really, really looked at her and the usher kind of came and he said, ma'am, we, it's kind of loud, you know. And I'm sorry, I get excited about Jesus. And in a little bit, she got excited again. And glory to God. And he came to her and he said, I told you we don't do that here. I don't know what's wrong with you. She said, I can't help it. I've got religion. I'm just full of it. I can't help it. He said, I can't help what you got. You Whatever you got, you didn't get it here. <laughs> well, I hope what you got, you do get it here. And even if you don't get it here, you have it in your heart because Jesus Christ is Lord wherever you are. He's Lord in the lunchroom. He's Lord in the office. He's Lord in the church. He's Lord in Washington. He's Lord in Moscow. He's Lord in London. Wherever you are, in the side of your bed, Jesus is still Lord. When the Holy Ghost manifests Himself, it's to profit you, it's to do you good. And this manifestation is seen in the works of God, the worship of God, the witness of God, the Word of God, and the wonder of God's salvation. The works of God in John chapter 2 verse 11 talks about Jesus turning the water into wine. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth His glory and His disciples believed on Him. We don't have to have miracles to serve God, but miracles helps to manifest the glory of God. They show that God is still God. They show that things can happen that this world cannot explain, the doctor cannot explain, the scientists cannot explain, the economists cannot explain. They show that God is God. God doesn't have to prove Himself to anyone, but He chooses to use miracles to manifest forth His glory. Jesus turned the water into wine. And I want to say this, I don't have all the Greek explanations, I don't have all the things that people have, the physiology and all these explanations they come up with. But I'm just an old Mill Hill boy who loves Jesus. And I know that that wine that Jesus made, yes, it was wine, but it was not intoxicating wine. It was not alcoholic wine. That wine that Jesus made was pure wine, and it wouldn't hurt you if you drank a gallon of it. If Jesus made, drank, and gave to others to drink, alcoholic wine, it certainly wouldn't be anything wrong with me guzzling down a chug of it. Now you can take that for what it's worth. Somebody comes to our church and they say, oh, it don't matter whether the wine had alcohol or not. Well, it does too. If he gave it to them to drink and it had alcohol, it'd be, it's alright for me to drink it. I can tell what camp a person is just by that one belief right there. Whether you believe the alcohol it, wine was alcoholic wine that Jesus made or whether it was pure fruit of the vine. I can tell what camp a person is right there. And it don't matter what camp you're in as far as I'm concerned, but the thing is, it's amazing to me how that people say their name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but their thinking hasn't changed. They still got that old rot gut thinking. 
And the miracle here is that Jesus made the water into wine. And it didn't hurt anyone when they drank it. And the governor of the feast said it was the best wine. Not because it had 80 proof. That's not what makes wine the best. That's what the drunkard in the wine owed thinks is the best. But when he tasted the wine and thought it was the best, it's because the best because Jesus made it. And he always is the best and the rest is just the rest. Chapter 9, verse 3, there was another situation. This man that was born blind. And Jesus was asked a question. What's wrong with this guy? He must have did a real bad sin to be born blind. Maybe his parents did something nobody knows about. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Jesus works the works of God. He does it in the 1st century. He does it in the 19th century. He does it in the 20th century. He does it in the 21st century. He does it in the 25th century. He does it whenever it is. The works of God. And that's the way that Jesus manifests forth the glory of God. And His disciples believed on Him. And they continue to believe on Him. Because He manifests forth His glory. This man, it's not because he sinned. We've all sinned. If you would go by... Whether we sinned or not, we'd all be in hell. We'd all be in bad shape. We'd all be blind. We'd all be crippled. We'd all be messed up if you go by how much we've sinned because all of us have sinned. Jesus said it's not that this man has sinned or his parents, but this is because that the works of God might be made manifest in him. And Jesus did that. The worship of God is seen to manifest the Spirit of God. When Jesus worked the works of God, it's not just because He is Jesus and He is. It's not just because He is God and He is. It's not just because He's the Son of God and He is. But He worked the works of God the same way that we work the works of God, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Because if it was not through the power of the Holy Spirit, and it was just because Jesus had deity that we don't have, then all these works would be ceasing to have been done when Jesus went back to heaven and when the apostles died and all this would have just been gone because Jesus is gone. But the thing is, the same Holy Ghost that was here before Jesus was born in Bethlehem is the same Holy Ghost that's here now and He's still working the works of God. He still wants to manifest Himself if we will allow Him to. Well, that's good preaching, even if I am, I'm doing it. The Holy Ghost worked through Jesus to perform the miracles that He did. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing but what I see the Father do, that I do. The words that I speak unto you, they're spirit and they're life. And I do these works, the works that I do, I do not of myself, but the Father who sent me, He doeth the works. He who believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. We're waiting to be called from Washington. We're waiting to be called from heaven. We're waiting for somebody to send us down a letter out of the sky that says, All right, go out and heal the sick. Jesus already told us to do that. The thing is, the enemy gets us in such bad shape, we can't heal the sick because we're not able to heal the sick ourselves. We're so sick ourselves, and we can't heal anybody. If we healed anybody, we'd heal ourselves. And we say, I can't heal anybody, and I know that's true. But Jesus said we could. We could do it because He did it, and we do it in His name. The worship of God. John fourteen twenty one and 22. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. One of the disciples wanted to know how he could manifest himself to us and not to the world. How in the world, Jesus, are you going to manifest yourself to us and not manifest yourself to the world? And Jesus explained that it is because of the love and loyalty relationship between us and himself. You have the Word of God. You keep the Word of God. You love the Word of God. You observe the Word of God. You go by the Word of God. You live by the Word of God. You think by the Word of God. You direct your life by the Word of God. You vote by the Word of God the best that you can. You direct your life by the Word of God. You have my commandments and keep them. He it is who loves me. And if you love my Word and you love me, I will love you. My Father will love you. We'll have that relationship with you. And we'll come and we'll make our abode with you. 
you. We'll set up a chair and pull up a chair and we'll sit there with you. We'll have fellowship with you. That's the kind of relationship he's talking about. That's the way that Jesus manifests himself to us and not to the world. You can be living in this world, and all of us still are, but you can be living in this world and chaos can be going on around you and you can have the manifestation of the Holy Ghost come down in your house. Praise God. He can come down in your bedroom. He can come down in your living room because you're going by the Word of God. You're observing the Word of God and you're living by the Word of God and He manifests Himself right there with you where you are. You got the fellowship of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, all three in one, right there with you where you are. Now that is a blessed and honorable privilege, brothers and sisters, that we would have the presence of God Almighty. He lives in heaven and sits on the throne, but yet He comes and manifests Himself to every born-again believer. And we worship Him and we praise Him and we give glory to His name. And when you begin to worship God and you begin to praise God, all your problems just seem to melt away. They might still be there, but you're not focusing on your problems. You're focusing on God. You're thinking about God's Word. And you're thinking about God's power. And you're thinking about God's name. And, and you're worshiping Him and you're blessing His name and you're lifting Him up. And you will not worship God. He won't sit up there in heaven and make fun of you while you you worship Him. He will manifest Himself to you. He will manifest the presence of the Holy Ghost. will come Himself and He'll be there with you. And I'm telling you like it is for what it's worth, brothers and sisters, you can have the presence of God. If you wait until you think that you're going to turn on a switch when you come into church and you're going to feel the Holy Ghost when you come into church and you turn that church switch off after you go out of some building, God help your mossy back soul because you done got yourself in bondage to man-made religion. You need to be able to worship God wherever you are. You don't have to do it out loud, but you can worship God in your heart, in your soul. Praise God. You can have the presence of the Holy Ghost with you where you are. He will manifest Himself, and He wants to do it. God does not want to bless you just when you're in no church building. He wants to bless you because it's not the church building. They thank God for the church building. But as you know, the church building can be flooded out. It's not no church building. You are the church in the building of the living God. You are the one that He walks and talks in. I will walk in them and talk in them, and they will be my sons and daughters, and I will be their God, says the Lord Most High. And we worship Him and He manifests Himself. The witness of God. 2 Corinthians 4, 10 and 11. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. When the world looks at us, oh, we're dying. Oh, we're deplorable. Sure we are. We're deplorables because we live for God. We're deplorables because we think a certain way. We're deplorables because we vote a certain way. We're deplorables. Oh, we're missing out on life. We're not free. We're in bondage. No, we're not in bondage. You're the one that's in bondage, you old egghead. You need to get right with God. Do you go to burn in hell? That's what bondage is all about. Trying to prove something you don't even believe in yourself. You know it ain't right. And the monkey says, and he knows who to be with, and he knows what kind to be with, and you don't even want to be with your right kind because you want to try to prove something that God ain't even in, and he don't have no part of, and yet you doing like the Old Testament said, you're bringing your children through the fire to Molech. God said, I didn't even think about such a thing. Nothing even can come in my mind like that. And people that are doing things now that don't even come into God's mind, much less the devil's mind and nobody else's. They're trying to come up with this thing that just don't even make monkey sense. They look at us and they say, oh, you're dying. Yeah, we're bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. We're identifying with Him. We're, we're representing Him. But that's the way that the life of Jesus can be made manifest in our body. To the world, it looks like we're going down. To the world, it looks like we're outnumbered. To the world, it looks like we're not going to make it. But you're looking at the superficial. You're looking at the outside. You're looking at that old eggshell. Ain't much of that eggshell. But beneath that eggshell, you've got some white and you got some yellow. It's good to gallon and good to a feather. 
There's some good in the body of Christ. A whole lot of good in the body of Christ. Jesus doesn't die for no church for nothing. He's going to take a church out of here. We're bearing about in the body the death of the Lord Jesus that the life of Christ may be made manifest in our body. The church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Paul talked about that. I want to know Him. I want to know Him in the power of His resurrection, being made conformable unto His death, the fellowship of His sufferings. We can't have the glory without sometimes having the glory that goes along with it. Everybody wants a blessing. They don't want to go through any hardship for Jesus. They don't want to go through no persecution for Christ. Well, the Scripture tells me that all who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And so, if you're going to live for God, you want the blessings of God, you want the eternity with God, you want to feel the Spirit of God, then you've got to take the heat that goes along with the cooking in the kitchen. The life of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Don't wait till you get to heaven. When I get to heaven, I'll do this. When I get to heaven, I'll do that. It's like the song that says, the old country boy said, when I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. And the city girl says, when I get to glory, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. <laughs> so whether it's sing, 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 or sing, 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 it's still the same thing. still the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you wait till you get to glory. When you praise God and worship God, if you wait till you get the glory to do that, you might not get there. You better worship and praise Him now. Well, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to shout through the ages. I'm gonna, why don't you just go ahead and start now then? I'm going to. G-O-N-N-A. Is that even a real word? I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Going to, should have, would have, could have, should have. Should have, could have, would have, ought to have had a boost. Well, we need a boost. The glory to God, Holy Ghost, get up under our God bless America. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. Now this verse refers back to verse 9 which talks about us being saved and called with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. God didn't have to wake up this morning and get up with a checker move on salvation. He already had a big checker move up on the devil before the world even began. He knew what this salvation was going to be about. It was already given to us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Jesus Christ came to manifest God's salvation. He said, I didn't come to do my own will, but I came to do the will of Him who sent me. And He came to manifest God's salvation. This salvation was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, but He came and He manifested this life to us, this wonderful life of Christ that was manifested. We're talking about the witness of God. He came as God's witness, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And now, He has abolished death. How did He do it? He died Himself. He raised His own self again from the dead. For the glory of God, God through the Holy Ghost, went down there and raised Jesus up from the dead. And now He has abolished death, and He has brought life and light through the Gospel. That's what Jesus did. He hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality. That means the ability to live forever. We had that. We lost it in Adam when they fell. But now Jesus has restored that ability to live forever through the gospel and the good news of the gospel. 1 John chapter 1, verse 2, For the life was manifested, this life, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. The same eternal life which was with the Father in the beginning is manifested to us through the coming and the ministry and the sacrifices of death and the resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. 
manifestation. The Word of God, Titus 1, 3, but hath in due times manifested His Word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Jesus said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He says, go into the world and make disciples of all nations. And this Word, in due times, God manifested forth His Word through preaching, and we need to preach the Word, we need to teach the Word, we need to sing the Word, we need to dramatize the Word, we need to do whatever we need to do to get the Word of God out, to preach and teach the Word. This Word through preaching. God manifests Himself through the Word of God. And that's what Jesus did. When the evening was come, they brought unto Him many who were sick. He cast out the spirits with His Word and healed all who were sick by the Word of God. The wonder of God's salvation. Oh, the wonder of it all. The wonder of it all. Just to know that God loves me, the song says. 1 John chapter 3, verses 5 and 8. And you know that He was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. That's why Jesus was manifested. He didn't come to overthrow the Roman government. Some people thought He did. He didn't come to make Himself a king. He didn't have to make Himself a king. He always was and is a king. He didn't have to make himself anything. Yeah, he made himself something, all right? He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. That's what he did. Was found in fashion as a man, and he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's why He was manifested. To take away your stinking, dirty, rotten sins and my stinking, dirty, rotten sins. And He was manifested to take away our sins. Not just cover them up. Not just explain them away. Your mama couldn't help it. Your daddy couldn't help it. Somebody stole your french fries at McDonald's and all kind of... Your third grade teacher didn't like you. You had a cow lick in your head and that made you go wrong in life. Well, I guess if a cow licked my head long enough, that's maybe just what's wrong with me. <laughs> no, He was manifested to take away our sins, and in Him is no sin. If He had had sin, He couldn't take away my sin. But He had no sin. He who knew no sin, God made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Second Corinthians 5.21 he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. If you follow the devil, you follow the loser. You follow the liar. You follow the liberal. The devil's the biggest liberal the world's got. And all of them's following him. That's who you follow. There's no in between, Mr. In Between. Latch onto the affirmative, the positive, the affirmative. Don't hang on to Mr. In Between. There's no mystery in between. You're either serving God or you're serving the devil. You see, the holiness or hell, there's no in between. In between is lukewarm, and that's the worst place you'd ever want to be. The devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came, that's why he's manifested. That's why the Holy Ghost manifests Himself every time He does. And there doesn't have to be a specific purpose that you can write down on paper. Because God loves you and He blesses you sometimes just to bless you. And you don't have to have any reason for that. But God manifests Himself. In the overall picture of things, He manifests Himself because of His own purpose. Because every time God manifests Himself, He wants to do something for us. He wants to break down walls. He wants to build up us up in the faith. He wants to destroy the works of the devil. And what are the works of the devil? The works of the devil are sin and sickness. And Jesus Christ came to destroy both of these twin evils that Satan has intended to, to destroy the human race and God's prized creation. And it's because of the glory of God manifesting in the person of Jesus Christ and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father for the grace and truth. And He came to manifest Himself to destroy the works of the devil. 
You don't have to beg God to heal you. You don't have to wonder if God wants to save. God wants to save and He wants to heal. And every time He does, He destroys the work of the devil. Jesus came to do that. And He went about everywhere doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Praise be to His holy name. That's what manifestation is all about. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to be healed. He wants you to be blessed. And I don't know all the answers of why we're not all the time, but I know a lot of the answers that anything that's wrong is not God. It's got to be something wrong with us. But I don't want you to leave, leave here today feel like there's nothing wrong with you because that's not it. God doesn't want you to say, oh, I've got something wrong with me. Somebody's seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost and they didn't get it manifested. And she said, there's something must be wrong with me. No, it's not anything wrong with you necessarily. Just keep on seeking God. Keep on trusting in God. Keep on waiting on God. God wants you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. He wants you to prophesy. He wants you to lift up on your high places. He wants to lift your feet up like deer's feet. He wants to do good and mighty things for you. He wants you to be blessed. Any message, God doesn't want me to be blessed. He doesn't want good things for me. He doesn't. He's trying to punish me. He doesn't have the best for me. All those messages are coming from that devil who sins from the beginning. And you don't need to listen to any of that. God's Word tells you that Jesus wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be lifted up. He wants to do good things for you. What about this increase? God does increase us. He does bless His people. He does want His people to be blessed. But it's not all material things. God has more blessings in the Spirit for you than you could ever buy with 10 million worlds. And the presence of God. I thank God for dancing. I thank God for jumping. I thank God for the unknown tongue. I thank God for all of that. But there's nothing else. If I had to have one choice, give me the presence of God to feel the presence of God, to enjoy the presence of God. And even if I can't speak a word, I can still know the presence of God in the manifestation of the Spirit. Praise God for the manifestation. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.